We'll now call this meeting of the Jacksonville City Council to order. I want to welcome everyone who's come out tonight for the meeting. Uh, we've got quite a few folks in the audience and uh, also want to welcome those that will be viewing the uh, meeting on G10 television. We're going to begin the meeting tonight uh, by having the Pledge of Allegiance led by Council Member Randy Thomas followed by the invocation by John Carter, our City Attorney. Please rise. <coughs> Join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our Heavenly Father, as always, we pause to give you thanks. To give you thanks for this day, to give you thanks for the blessings that you most graciously bestow upon us individually and as the city of Jacksonville. As we're now entering another hurricane season, we pray that through your providence you would protect us from severe storms. And that when storms do come our way, that we as a city and as a community will pull together to help each other so that we can live out our motto of being a caring community. We pray for our military members who are serving us here and around the world for their safety and for their anxious families. And as always, we pray that your guidance and direction would be with our mayor and with our council. All this we ask in your holy name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Council, you have before you, uh, you've had an opportunity to review the agenda for tonight's meeting. I would entertain a motion this time to adopt. So moved. Second. Well, let me, I'm sorry, I forgot to add yeah. that there's a resolution of support for Albert J. Ellis uh, Control Tower. Uh, we'd like to place under the consent agenda. Yes, I do. Right. Second. That's, that's, okay. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? <clears throat> we have some presentations to make tonight, and I'm going to come around front. First presentation tonight is a life-saving award. I'd like to ask uh, Chief Mike Canero, who's the Director of Public Safety, if you'll join me up front, please. And Jerry Hardison, the Fire Department. I'd like to call up Eddie Rochelle, who's a driver operator with our emergency, fire and emergency services, and Robert Hunt. And if your wives wish to join you, that'd be wonderful. Come on up, ladies. That way we can get a photograph with you up here. I won't make you say anything or sing or anything like that. <laughs> <Nice. clears throat> On May 30, or March 30, 2015, Jacksonville Fire and Emergency Services Squad 3 was dispatched to a home to respond to a man who was having trouble breathing. Upon arrival, the patient was assessed and responders found no pulse. CPR was begun as firefighter Hunt prepared the bag valve mask with supplemental oxygen while driver operator Rochelle began an air path, airway path with ventilators, ventilations. Also, county EMS arrived on the scene shortly thereafter and placed an advanced airway in the patient. Firefighter Hunt continued with rescue ventilation and compressions. Approximately 15 minutes after CPR was initiated, the victim began spontaneous breathing and a pulse was found. Hallelujah. Firefighter Hunt rode with the victim and EMS to the hospital and assisted until the patient was transferred to the ER. 
the immediate response and life-sustaining efforts by driver operator Eddie Rochelle and firefighter Robert Hunt resulted in preventing a very tragic occurrence and they were very and they are very worthy of receiving this life-saving award tonight and at this time I'd like to present these awards I'd like to ask uh, Mr. Art Fraser and, and his wife uh, to join me up front. Join us up front here. You can uh, stand up here with these guardian angels that uh, took care of you that night. And as I said, I'm glad to have you with us still. Thank you, sir. It's kind of touch and go there for a while, wasn't it? Yes, yes sir. It was scary. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. um, Oh, okay. Want us to close in? Want to close in with you? You, you folks especially want y'all to close in together here and get a photograph with you all. So, Hey, survive not, <coughs> survive this. Very good. Okay. Uh, next, we'd like to present uh, for the, this is the police patrol bicycle. It's a donation uh, by the 97 Jazza Coastal Surge soccer team. And I'd like to ask Haley Bowles, who's the team captain, if you would join me up front here. Haley's here. And I'd like to ask Chief, if you'll come back up again, and also Officer Ashley Potter. Hello, how you doing? Is that okay if my whole team comes? Please. Bring them, please, by all means. Yes, Girls. I didn't know you had your whole team with you, but that's great. Yeah. Double Good evening, everyone. Um, on behalf of the coaches and the 97 Jazza Coastal Surge, U18 players and our families, we would like to thank the Jacksonville police officer, officers for, vo for volunteering in the community, mentoring young adults, and supporting all the outreach programs sponsored by the Department of Public Safety. As an example, Officer Ashley Mixon Potter volunteers her time as an assistant coach and goalie trainer for our team, 97 Jazz of Surge. She trains and travels with the team whenever she is not performing her JPD duties. Our team is beyond blessed to have one of Jacksonville's finest mentoring our exceptional athletes. With all that being said, we would like to present Chief of Police, Gennaro, Lieutenant Libel, Officer Potter, and all of the bike patrol officers with the newest, most swagger GPD bike. <laughs> so. Walk up closer to get better pictures. 
very nice of you. Thank you. Thank you all. Have a nice Very sweet. That was a very sweet gesture on y'all's part. <laughs> Did somebody just ride off of that bicycle? <laughs> Next, we have a presentation of a proclamation for Hurricane Severe Weather Awareness Day. And I'd like to ask Jojo Carriasso if you would join me up front. He's the services court, senior services coordinator, uh, Cindy Wheeler who's the uh, Onslow County Chapter of the American Red Cross, uh, Eric Carlson, who's Installation Emergency Manager, Marine Corps Base Camp Azern, Mike Wetzel, I, there you are, Mike, I didn't even see you back there, Senior Services Supervisor, and Sergeant Denise Peters from the Jacksonville Police Department. She's a Community of, uh, Services Officer. Thank you very much for coming. And I'm very honored uh, to present a proclamation uh, to members of the event Planning Committee, which I uh, assume that's what you all are, the Event Planning Committee, for the Hurricane and Severe Weather Expo scheduled for Saturday, June 6th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Jacksonville Commons Recreation Complex. And this time I'd like to read this proclamation. Whereas North Carolina is traditional, traditionally an active hurricane, tornado, and severe thunderstorm state with statewide damages exceeding $19 million annually, and whereas during the past century, nearly the entire eastern two-thirds of the state has experienced hurricane force winds, and North Carolina ranks fifth nationally for overall damage from hurricanes. And whereas every community, business, family, and individual must be ready year-round for natural disasters, including tornadoes, hurricanes, and severe thunderstorms that may disrupt normal daily activity. And whereas residents of Onslow County can take a few simple steps to help make preparedness and personal responsibility a priority. And whereas the Jacksonville Recreation and Parks Department, Jacksonville Public Safety, Onslow County Emergency Services and Marine Corps Base Camp Lejeune are hosting a hurricane and severe weather expo to inform and educate Onslow County residents about how to stay safe in severe weather. And whereas the Hurricane and Severe Weather Expo will be held Saturday, June 6, 2015 from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. at the Jacksonville uh, Commons Recreation Complex. <clears throat> now therefore I, Sammy Phillips, the mayor of the city of Jacksonville, do hereby proudly proclaim June 6, 2015, as Hurricane and Severe Weather Awareness Day in the city of Jacksonville, and I encourage all citizens to attend the Hurricane and Severe Weather Ex Expo to learn about the importance of being equipped and prepared. I want to thank you all for serving uh, your service on this committee. Uh, this very, like I said, is very important because we are in the eye of the storm most of the time. So, who's going to receive this? Jojo, okay. Thank you very much. Uh, Mayor Sammy Phillips and uh, Jacksonville City Council, I'd like to thank you for your continued support um, on helping bring this event to the community. It's certainly been a pleasure to work with the city departments, the Onzo County departments, and the departments at Camp Lejeune to uh, bring this event to the community. We've got over 35 vendors that are going to be available on June the 6th to answer questions for the public. And I hope to see everybody in the G10 viewing area there. Thank you. Thanks, JoJo.
you will indulge me for one moment. I know this is not on your agenda for tonight's meeting, but uh, if y'all want to join me down front here. I have one more presentation to make that wasn't on our agenda this evening. But, hey, sometimes we just fly by the seat of our pants and usually get a lot more done that way. Uh, on May 25th of 2010, Dr. Richard Woodruff joined the city as our city manager. Why don't you come on up and join us? I think I can speak on behalf of the whole council when I say that we have really come to have a tremendous faith and confidence in Dr. Woodruff and his ability to lead the city, the city's team, to accomplish the city's mission. Under his leadership, many city projects and initiatives have been accomplished. Now we'd like to uh, show you a short video that highlights some of those accomplishments, and if you'll just watch the screens. Hello, I'm Richard Woodruff, the city manager for the city of Jacksonville. began the planning process for the Center for Public Safety how many years ago? Eight years ago. Eight we years actually ago. started eight years ago. You come over the bridge and the beautiful uh, arch that they put on the Phillips Bridge now is going to give a bird's eye view not only to the estuarine system of the river but also a great view of the new center. Among all these efforts stands one person as the most central of figures. That person adopted and then championed this cause. He reached out to others to incorporate the design features that you see today. But these features were largely his imagination, his vision of a grand and magnificent fountain that would stand tall at this entrance to the downtown and give a hero's welcome to all those who pass through our community in service to our country. Dr. Richard Woodruff oversaw every detail of this fountain. I watched you on G10 and it's almost a surreal experience to realize I'm sitting here tonight in your immediate presence and I do appreciate the honor you have bestowed upon me. Over the last week I have had meetings with each of the divisions, probably with uh, over 200 of the employees. I will tell you you have a dedicated workforce. They're on board with the ideas of quality in all that we do and service to others before self and I'm very pleased to be the leader of your organization and thank you for that honor. script for just 
just one moment and say a few things. Um, these were very good notes that y'all gave me, but I, I want to say one thing, uh, and this pretty much sums up uh, my feelings about how uh, my tenure as mayor with, with Richard Woodruff as the city manager has been. Um, I think if I, I've, been, I've been involved in city government now, not counting being an employee for the 30 years, but for the 10 years I've served on the, as, count, as a councilman and as mayor, of all of the th things that I've ever done as a member of this council, I think being part of the selection of Richard Woodruff as city manager was probably the most important decision that was made and it has really uh, brought our city forward. Uh, one thing I say about Richard, Richard has a, a phenomenal way of making dreams a reality. And uh, he takes what our, our, our council and the mayor uh, thinks we want to be, imagines we want to be, and he makes it happen. And I've never seen anyone in all my time in government that can make things happen like he makes it happen. Uh, we were very fortunate to be in the time and the place when he came along. It was simple. It was a it was an accident that we came upon you. You know, it just so happens you happen to have your profile with Jim Mercer at the time, and uh, you know, from the time we first interviewed you, you you knocked our socks off in the interview, and uh, from that uh, from that point, from the time we hired you five years ago. He's not let up a bit. If anybody thinks he has, then you haven't been watching. But uh, we're, we're very fortunate as a council, and I think I can speak for the rest of the council. We're very fortunate to have someone that, that has the team building skills and, and has the implementation and the drive that Richard has. So Richard, I'm very pleased to present to you your five-year pin. And I hope that I get to present you with a 10-year pin. Uh, but on behalf of city council, thank you so much for everything you've done, for the service. And I'm talking about those pictures in that video you saw, the weed eating and stuff, he does that, you know. I mean, this is the kind of man we are. And I want to tell one other story if I can. Back up just a minute. <clears throat> I mean, I'm in charge. I want to tell this so that you know what kind of person Richard Woodruff is. A few years ago, we were we, we, had, we had some financial problems with the city that we were trying to work through with the budget. Our city employees didn't get a raise, or got a raise. They got a 2% raise, which is pretty good by today's standards. You know, money's kind of hard to come by without raising taxes and stuff like, like you know what I'm talking about. But, you know, the employees were going to get a 2% pay increase. And if I can disclose this personnel information, Dr. Woodruff's evaluation was done, and of course it was a sterling evaluation, and the council felt that he deserved a very large increase that we were talking about doing 7% to give him a 7% increase because we felt that he was that valuable to us as a manager. Let me tell you about your city manager. He turned us down. What does that say about him? He could not accept the 7%. He did not want to accept anything more than what the employees that worked under him received. That speaks volumes about a person. And, and it's with that, uh, if anything needed to convince me of the kind of person Richard Woodruff was, that did it. But anyway, thank you so much, Richard. Now you can... Now you can. It's an honor and privilege to work for the city of Jacksonville. It's an honor and privilege to lead a group of dedicated people. We have 555 budgeted positions. They all are committed to the same thing, and that is quality services and responsible government. And it is an honor to be here and to lead and work every day with you and to serve with the mayor and council. I will also say to you, the things that you see in the video, none of those are possible without the mayor and council giving us the authorization to do it. They're the ones who set the vision. They're the ones who adopt the budget. They're the ones who take the political heat because of taxes going up. But at the end of the day, I think every city employee should be thanked for the role that they do in providing quality services every day. Thank you for letting me be part of the city. Thank you.
Thank you, folks. I did not know that. Okay. Oh, they didn't want to come. Yeah. You know, she, she's like, oh, <laughs> Is that the grandchildren? Yeah. Oh, come on. <laughs> Bring them on in here. <laughs> Get a picture. Well, I still have everybody in here. I have a public comment sheet that no one signed. Is it, while everybody's in here, did anybody want to speak public comment while I got a house full? All right. Seeing no one, I'm going to take a quick break. And I know some of you just came for the uh, presentations. And we're going to take a real quick time out here. If you wish to leave, that's fine. If you want to stay for the rest of the meeting, by all means do. Thank you. 
I wrote a little letter to thing that worries me is if they sell, you know, yeah, I think you're going to see a lot of reduced services. That's the only way they can make it work. Yeah. Yeah.
we'll go back in session. Uh, we're going to go down to item number seven on the agenda for tonight, and this is the uh, this is a public hearing and map amendment for rezoning from. Excuse me, just a minute, Ma uh, Abigail. Let me do this real quick. Uh, we have the adoption of the minutes and consent items. We have a we have minutes from an April 28, 2015 special workshop meeting. I'm still getting used to this <coughs> format. Uh, it might take a few more meetings before I get it down, but anyway, slow learning curve here. Uh, April 28, 2015, special workshop meeting. Mayor Phillips, I move that uh, we approve the consent agenda and the April 28, 2015 special workshop meeting minutes as presented. Did you second, Mr. Thomas? I second. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed. Back to you, Abigail. Uh, this is uh, rezoning from RSF 20 to uh, CCCU or commercial corridor, or corridor commercial, uh, 4275 Gum Branch Road. And Abigail Barman, our, one of our senior planners, will be uh, presenting this item. Thank Abigail. You. Um, I'd just like first to say that there's no doubt that Dr. Woodruff's leadership resonates throughout the entire organization. And Congratulations on five years. Thank you very much, Abigail. Um, Scott Gray, the owner of this property, submitted a rezoning for 7.16 acres that is located on the ETJ off of Gum Branch Road between Summersill School Road and Rain Tree. You can see the subject parcel here. It's highlighted in the middle. And there is sort of residential in the back and light commercial surrounding the area. The future land use designates this as neighborhood commercial. The property is along Gum Branch. You can see highlighted in pink here. The existing zoning is RSF 20. And the original petition was for general use corridor commercial. With the planning advisory board meeting, they were concerned about the residents, the impact on the residents on the back half of the pack on the back half of the property. We've since worked with the applicant to come up with some conditions that we believe satisfies the concern raised at planning board. So the application has been revised since the original petition of general use CC to conditional use CC, with the conditions being that the back part of the property would only be used for parking, stormwater, or accessory structures. So any use on the back half would be very minimal to have minimal impact on the adjoining residents. The staff and planning board, or the staff recommends planning board of the conditional rezoning based on findings of facts A through J being found in the affirmative and that the rezoning advances the public interest by allowing further development opportunities and making the zoning district compliant with the future land use. And I believe the owner and applicant is here and I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. I got a real quick question. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, without going any further into this, there was a single family dwelling that was part of this parcel, or, or is that correct? Correct. And uh, had you can't really it? see it on the, it's right there. You can barely see it on the aerial. Okay. Is it occupied? I do not believe it is. Yes, sir. This house is occupied. Uh, the tenants will be moving out in the next few months, and then uh, it could be moved out or whatever. I take it this is the. This is the applicant, Mr. Applicant. Gray. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gray. <coughs> Any questions of Ms. Barman? I got a couple of questions. Now, you you mentioned the conditions, but as a Conditional use won't it have to come back to us once the use is defined. Is that not? Or is all the conditions? No, are the stated? conditions will just be what you find in the attachment, J. Just those conditions. So when it comes to when a development plan is submitted, it would make sure that those conditions are met. This is that new zoning district that was added with UDO. We are used to using the terms conditional uses. Now we're dealing with what we call conditional rezoning. So you're rezoning the property, but you're placing conditions on the back portion. 
and again that's one of the new districts it's it really I think we've only used it twice now and it's been in the UDO for about a year mm -hmm. when you adopted it mm -hmm. so it's so very what similar is the actual to the actual condition conditions use. pardon me what what are the conditions it's uh, found in attachment J it's the back portion of the property starting even with the existing commercial designation it would only be allowed to be parking stormwater features or an accessory use and it's limited to I believe one story and 25,000 square feet I don't have it in front of me but very small accessory use accessory so the, meaning just an accessory uh, just if it was like a shed, storage, or storage shed yeah or so the uses would be anything that is permitted in the corridor commercial district so this front half could be used for anything permitted right. in the CC district but anything that would go on this back half would be limited to just that parking accessory and stormwater features one of the reasons we did this over the planning board recommendation yes. is having the residential to residential would not require a buffer if it was developed residential because it is residential to residential having the commercial to commercial would still require the fence the 30-foot buffer so it offered some protection for the surrounding residents as well as going the conditional route limited so you wouldn't have an intense commercial use on that back half of the property so in, uh, on the attachment B the use table says uh, list the different uses uh, correct under CC yeah so any use would be permitted under that CC with the limit on that back portion of the property and mayor that's the reason why we were originally opposed <laughs> to the rezoning unless it was changed to the conditional rezoning because I think you can you would uh, feel comfortable with the front part of the property being used for commercial when it's adjacent to other commercial but to have commercial activities especially any activity that's in the CC be adjacent to the rear of those homes we felt was not an appropriate thing I think so that's the staff how we originally was going to recommend Bulletin denial also right end up the same yeah. concept what we were trying to do with those lots on Western any yes, flats sir. on Western mm -hmm. Boulevard. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Okay. Any other questions of Mr. Barman? Thank you, Abigail. Well, that will uh, recess the regular council meeting, open the required public hearing in this matter. Is there anyone present wishes to speak to this matter? So please indicate by raising your hand. This time I'll close the public hearing and reconvene the council meeting and uh Mr. Mayor, i'll make a motion i'd like to move that uh, we approve the conditional rezoning request uh, based on findings of facts a through j being found in the affirmative and that the rezoning uh, advances the public interest by creating more commercial opportunities second i have a motion and a second is there any discussion Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Our next item is agenda eight. Agenda item <coughs> eight, this is a, a public hearing on extraterritorial jurisdiction boundary amendment, uh, reducing the area of the ETJ, uh, specifically on Onslow Pines Road. And Abigail uh, Barman will be presenting this item also. Abigail. Um, we've been working with the county. Um, this area is the on the south end of town around Onslow Pines Park. You'll see it's selected here in red. We've just kind of been having some conflicts with using the park as the county has it because it's county owned, county operated, but it's under city jurisdiction. So we've been working together and we decided it would make sense to just kind of relinquish that portion of the ETJ back to the county. That way there's no confusion, no who's doing permits for what, who has jurisdiction where. So it is 25 parcels in total, about 187 <coughs> acres. You'll see that the, they're the ones highlighted here. It's currently zoned RSF 20. And if we relinquish it to the ETJ, county would take over zoning, so it would be under county zoning jurisdiction. And their, their um, county commissioners, I believe, saw it in April, and they were, they've been on board with it. So we're kind of on the same page with it and so staff recommends approval to amend the ETJ amendment and change the official zoning map I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have council any questions of Miss Barman on this issue 
Thank you. At this time, I'm going to recess the regular council meeting and open the public hearing that's required in this matter. Is there anyone present wishes to speak to this matter? So please indicate by raising your hand. Seeing no one, I'm closing the public hearing, reconvening the regular council meeting. Council, you're being asked to uh, consider the proposed request here to reduce the ETJ. Mayor Phillips, I'll make the motion to um, approve the ETJ amendment as requested. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? <clears throat> motion carries. Uh, agenda item number nine tonight is a reappointment uh, to the Board of Adjustment. Uh, we have a uh, term of expire on June 30th of 2015. Uh, Mr. Bittner is the uh, liaison to the Board of Adjustment, but I believe you are in yes, going to make a nomination yes, in his stead. So, I'll Yes, sir. Mayor Phillips, um, in, in Mr. Bittner's ab absence, he's asked me to nominate Mr. Gary Herbold for reappointment to the Board of Adjustment for a three-year term ending June 30th, 2018. I believe Mr. Uh, Herbold has served uh, for, for several years and is a good standing member of the committee. Thank you, sir. Are there any other nominations? Mayor, I'll move that the nomination be closed and Mr. Herbold, Herbold be accepted by acclamation. Second. I have a motion and second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Mr. Herbold is reappointed. Next, I have uh, some appointments to the uh, Environmental and Appearance Advisory Committee. We have uh, Five members with terms expiring on June 30th, 2015. All five members request consideration of reappointment to additional three year terms, with three of those members desiring reappointment by extension to the tree board. And uh, Ms. Washington is the uh, liaison to the Environmental and Appearance Advisory <coughs> Committee, and I will ask you now if you have any nominations to make. I do, Mayor Phillips. I would like to nominate Mr. Patrick Carroll, Ms. Suzanne Nelson, Mrs. Willie Saunders, Mrs. Betty Schaufelbaum, and Mrs. Eugenia Webb for the reappointment to the Environmental and Appearance Advisory Committee for three years terms ending June 30th, 2018, which includes also reappointments of Ms. Nelson, Ms. Saunders, and Mrs. Schaufelbaum to the tree board. I would also like to nominate our leadership development member, Sarah Holden, for the vacant seat on the committee for an existing term expiring June 30th, 2017. Okay, thank you. Are there any other nominations? Mayor Phillips, I'll make the motion to uh, close nominations and accept by acclamation. Second. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Next, agenda item number 11, we have a planning advisory board reappointments. <clears throat> we have uh, two, two members uh, whose uh, terms will expire June 30th, 2015. Both members uh, desire reappointment for an additional three-year term. And uh, Council Member Bob Warden is the Council Member uh, who serves as a liaison to the Planning Advisory Board. Mr. Warden, do you have any nominations to make? Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor, thank you. Uh, I'd like to uh, reappoint Danny Williams and Suzanne Nelson for a three-year term expiring June 30th, 2018. Thank you. Are there any other nominations? Mayor Phillips, I move that the nominations be closed and the candidates be accepted by acclamation. Second. Okay. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Agenda item number 12 is Water and Sewer Advisory Committee reappointments. Uh, the terms of three members of that uh, committee will expire on June 30th, 2015. All three members desire consideration for reappointment to an additional three-year term. Council member Randy Thomas is the council liaison to the Water and Sewer Advisory Committee. And Mr. Thomas, do you have any nominations? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Yes, I'd like to nominate uh, John Bryan, Diana Rashash, and David Terry for reappointment 
to the Water Sewer Advisory Committee for a three-year term ending June 30th, 2018. Thank you. Are there any other nominations? Mayor Phillips, I move that the nominations be closed and the candidates be accepted by acclamation. Second. I have a motion and a second. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? That brings us to our last section of public comment. I don't see any names still on the sheet there, but if somebody came in late and wishes to speak, uh, please indicate by raising your hand. All right, that'll bring us to our reports for this evening. I'm gonna start with uh, Mr. Willingham. Thank you. I have two things. First, I'd like to recognize Mr. Walter Walt Marshall and his wife, Gloria. I thank them for coming out. He was a longtime public servant and they know him as Mr. Walt in my community because he was um, the operator of Kerr Street Recreation Center for a long time and I remember how invested he was in that job mm -hmm. to the extent that um, things that were needed for the building he did himself a lot of painting time he spent down there so thank you Mr. Marshall thank you Gloria uh, for coming out thank you Mr. and Mrs. Marshall Second, um, I commend um, Dr. Woodruff again on his years of service. It doesn't seem like that long ago that we were in his interview, and I remember telling the council that he seemed like a mix uh, of a um, professor and a preacher, and he uh, just seemed to have that, um, that maturity that kept things in um, proper perspective. The mayor spoke of um, dreams coming true with Dr. Woodruff. He's sort of really gone beyond our dreams. We had a master plan for downtown development that went back to the 90s. And Dr. Woodruff likes to deflect and give um, us credit. I hope we had something to do with it. But we were here before he came. And he has been the outcome determinative variable that's made such a difference in getting things done. Um, the clean and green program um, that he has led and he gives a lot of um, 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 well he gives a lot of credit for these things to the staff and they're well deserving and all of our workers but um, he's been the leader with that effort to the extent that it looks like we have a city and I like to characterize it as a city within a park with all of the, the greenways and the landscaping that we've done with medium with the medians, he's taken areas that we sort of neglected in terms of beautification and made them very beautiful. So we certainly thank that, and uh, thank him for that, and moving us uh, well beyond our expectations. Thank you, Dr. Woodruff. Thank you. Nothing very, further. Very well said. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem Lazar. Thank you, Mayor. Um, first of all, I'd like to go over some uh, transportation items uh, to bring everybody up to, to date. Um, our new Division Three Board of Transportation member, Sandra Fountain, has been very engaged and has been extremely helpful. She has helped secure over $100,000 for some new uh, pedestrian crosswalks. So we have three new uh, crosswalks scheduled. Uh, two of them are located on Gum Branch Road, uh, one by Williamsburg Parkway, and one at Doris Avenue. Um, and the third is on Johnson Boulevard at Hargett Street. Um, so again, we're, we're making significant progress installing crosswalks within our city. Um, these projects are anticipated within the next year to, to, to become a reality. So a special thanks to her and her efforts uh, to get engaged uh, quickly and, and being uh, a big uh, proponent of this city. Um, Board of Transportation is expected to adopt the 2016, the 2015, 2016 uh, state transportation improvement uh, program later this week. Within that program, there's over $300 million worth of projects, um, uh, worth of, of transportation projects investment here within our uh, jurisdiction, our Jacksonville area. So we're extremely proud of that and the work that uh, Anthony Prince and his team have done in, in coordinating those efforts. I mean, that's significant. We were one of the top receivers of funding, so we're very proud of that. So uh, look for good things to come. 
Um, also, uh, the governor's bond initiative, we'll talk about that for a quick moment. Um, he unveiled a $2.85 billion statewide uh, bond proposal for transportation and public investment and infrastructure. Included in that bond proposal is about $11 million uh, of funding for Fort Bragg and Camp Lejeune. Um, and as part of that, we just want to inform you that our MPO is engaged with that and, and sort of helping that process through that, that, uh, that whole uh, bond proposal still has a long way to go, but we are engaged and, and we will be part of the solution of that should that come to fruition to help the base uh, get those projects moving forward. Um, also, um, I would like to congratulate um, Richard for, I didn't realize five years was that quick, so I guess that's a good thing. But Great hair comes fast. That's right. The only thing I'll add, and I know there's a lot of great things been said tonight, but I, I have the opportunity to travel throughout the states on the boards that I serve, and you're, you're extremely well respected outside of Onslow County as well, and I think that speaks volumes anyone that you've been engaged with outside of this community thinks a lot of you and, and, and who you are, and I think that means a lot to this board up here. So thank you for those efforts. And that's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. I would just like to say congratulations, Dr. Woodruff, on your five years. I've been with you for four years, and so hopefully we'll have many more years together. Congratulations, thank you, sir. Mr. Thomas? Uh, sure. Thank you, Sam. Um, I'd like to kind of echo what uh, Sammy said that I think that was probably one of the best things that I've done to help do since my tenure here was the selection of uh, Richard Woodruff for our new town manager and I wanted to uh, everybody to recognize other people that were involved that led to this thing the former councilwoman Alva Williams and former council person Reva Sullivan without their input and actions he would not be here either so I think they deserve recognition as true as well thank you again for your service Mr. Ward. I would just say that uh, the only negative that uh, that I can remember when we had your had your interview was the uh, the Clemson background and <laughs> we had uh, we had decided that it was time that that somebody from Clemson got a job and so you you happen to be in the right place at the right time so uh, thank you for coming this way thank you I still remember the black preacher suit you wore. I think that fits <laughs> He was sharp. <laughs> I did want to. I did want to remark that uh, Council Member Bittner was unable to be here tonight due to uh, I think he was having some uh, a medical situation he had to tend to. So uh, we'll be thinking about him. I, I'm sure. I'm sure he'd much rather be here. <laughs> Doctor Woodruff. One, oh, I have one last comment. Uh, I, I think. Uh, I think uh, Council Member Willingham was your your biggest champion in that in that meeting. I hope I'm not embarrassing him, but uh, you know we were we were talking about some others, and he says, "No, no, no, you you're missing the boat if we don't hire this guy." So, so, but I think he was a, a former Clemson grad himself. <laughs> <laughs> Mayor and Council, again, it, it's a privilege. You humble me. It, it's a very humbling experience to be recognized. You know, I have uh, a great leadership team in Ron and John and Glenn and, and Carmen. We are blessed to have you and what you do. Uh, and again, uh, it, you know, we've had five great years. It goes by quickly. Uh, we have a lot of challenges coming up in the next year. We're going to fulfill those and we're going to look for new challenges because Jacksonville is a community that has a mission and that is to serve the Marines and sailors. We remember who we are and we're going to continue to move the city forward with your leadership and I appreciate that. A couple of announcements we would like to make. I'm going to ask if Susan is still here, if Susan Baptist can come up for a moment because I would like to have her brief the public on the summer special events that we're going to be having. Susan. Um, uh, good afternoon again. Uh, thank you for your service. We uh, couldn't ask for a better leader to, to move us forward for the city. Um, in addition to that, we also have summer quickly upon us. School gets out next Friday, so we're busy over at Recreation and Parks getting everything ready for the kids. We have a 
full uh, slate of summer programs scheduled. So if anybody's kids um, want to be busy and active, they can certainly call us or look at our website for any activities. We have uh, lots of day camps already full, but we still have room and we will make every accommodation possible. So we will service probably about 400 kids this summer. Um, every day, all day, from the time Friday gets out of school uh, until the day they go back in. So we're real proud to be able to offer that to our citizens. Uh, in addition to that, we have lots of summer events and activities and uh, special events. The movie started last Friday. We've moved them over to the Commons. We've had great public feedback. They like the new venue. It's a little bit bigger. They're able to get, get more room. Kids can run a little bit more. So we uh, anticipated, we averaged about 400 people on that on Friday night. So it was a good success. And for the first one, that's a good, good way to start. We also start our new series, concert series this summer. Real excited. Navy Federal Credit Union has uh, been able to support us on that new venture this summer. And starting on June 28th, it's a Sunday afternoon, 3.30 down at Riverwalk Crossing Park. We're excited to offer a music series. So hopefully we will keep all of the kids safe and active and healthy this summer, as well as all the parents. Um, having stuff for their kids to do and all of the families for some nice weekend activities with special events. Thank you, Susan. Thank you. Appreciate Thanks, it. Two other things we would like to mention. Uh, Susan did mention school is going to be out. We'd encourage everybody to remember that that means uh, a real change in your traffic patterns. Going to have a lot of children on bicycles out playing, so please be safe. You may have also noticed that there is a traffic uh, change on the base. Uh, Wilson Gate is now open. Also, the uh, Ron is it TT one or TT two is now closed. TT TT one is closed. That's the one across from Corbin. Mm -hmm. uh, that is going to be a long-term closure, and because of that, we are seeing some congestion in at the other TT gate. It's our understanding that in time that gate also will close. We'd like to inform the public that in the afternoon they are currently stacking out onto Western Boulevard. We are going to, and out on 24, uh, I should say. Uh, we are going to be doing an educational program with the folks who live in TT on the base, and then we're going to begin code enforcement through traffic division because we certainly cannot have that traffic stack out and block 24. So the base is in the process of some significant rearrangements but if you'll remember the master plan for the Wilson Gate, the plan is for the internal traffic off of TT to not come out on 24, but rather to eventually access the Wilson Gate. Uh, Ron, you have any other clarifications on that? No, sir. Other than, uh, you know, what we hope to convince everybody is to think about using the Wilson Gate instead of turning into TT2. If they just drive down, they can go through the new gate and get on base that way. And there's more queuing space outside that gate than there is by TT2. Uh, lastly, I would like to thank the mayor and council again. Uh, it has been five great years. You are a wonderful group to work with. The thing that I honor the most is that you know how to discuss points and debate points, but you never argue points. You always find a way to bring consensus. It is easy to work for you and with you, and it's a privilege to continue to work with the management team and with your city employees. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Okay. Just want to be, I'm glad to be here, glad to serve with the mayor and council, and glad to serve with Richard, and he is the best. And that's it. Thank you. <coughs> All right. Uh, can I have a motion to adjourn unless anybody has something they want to add? So move. Second. Any discussion? Opposed. All those in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> <laughs>